We're just saying that it's off to a nice start. Why does it have to be all or nothing all the time? Like, what am I doing? I'm doing it for the show. Field of 68 till I die. This is the Field of 68 After Dark Show, the only place that you need to be for college hoops every single night. And we are live. Welcome to the Saturday evening edition of the Field of 68 After Dark. We are live on Sirius XM Channel 84. That is the ESPNU station. We are streaming over on YouTube right now. If you are watching there, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Jump in the chat. Ask us questions. We will be answering them during breaks. My name is Rob Doster. I'm joined tonight by Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman. Noted Providence fan Terrence Oglesby, who's celebrating the Friars' Uh, Big East regular season title and a new addition to the crew making his debut on after dark Ryan Daly, who scored a thousand points in his career while at St. Joe's and Delaware. We are presented by our partners over at bet river Sportsbook. and man fellas today was the craziest day in the history of college basketball. I don't know if that's even uh even an exaggeration. Five of the top six teams in the country lost six of the top nine teams in the country lost. It is only the second time in the history of the sport that six Top 10 teams in the AP poll lost on the same day. Uh, and number one, Gonzaga is losing right now at St. Mary's by 15 at halftime. Ryan, I'm going to you first on this one. Which was the most surprising upset and why? Yeah, I think that the Auburn game probably to me was the most shocking. Uh, I definitely didn't see, you know, them going into Tennessee and just getting manhandled on the boards. I mean, they got dominated in the second half, especially. Uh, and the point guard play, I mean, Green wasn't great, two for 15, obviously, and I just didn't see that coming. T.O.? If, you're, if, if I'm looking at it objectively, I think the Arizona loss was tough because of how they gave up all their points. Whenever you go to a place in Colorado two days after playing great at Utah and you give up 56 points in the pay, that's very uncharacteristic in a way Arizona plays, man. You got all that length around the perimeter defensively, and you have some big boys inside in Christian Colonco and Tabellus, and you're able to – on senior night, and I realize that brings a lot of emotion if you're in Boulder, but on senior night, you at least got to be ready to play defensively. If you give up that many points in the paint, they were getting wherever they want. Whenever I say they, I'm talking about Colorado. They get into the paint, makes it pre- for a pretty easy day, especially when your defense isn't talking like it should be. You know, P- Purdue has the Big Ten title in front of them, right? We've all thought that Purdue was going to turn it on at some point. They go into the Breslin Center today, and they lose to a Michigan State team that we've all – we've said it all year. They're, they're mediocre, right? They've lost four of their last five. They don't have a star. Their point guard play is, is just average. I don't know. I'm just expecting more out of Purdue than this. I, I, I felt like they were going to go and get a big road win like Wisconsin does – everywhere they play in the big 10. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Kentucky who uh, was finally healthy. They had Ty Ty Washington, severe wheeler back, and they went on the road to Bud Walton arena and, and took a loss in a game where they were down double digits early. And it looked like Arkansas was on the verge of running away with that thing. Uh, they put up a fight. They came back in the second half, they covered, and that was enough to be able to get them to climb from number three up to number two in Ken Palm. So how about that? They lost, and they improved in the metrics. I know that's going to make Goodman uh, the happiest man on the planet. So uh, it was, I I think. Goddamn Ken Palm. (laughs) Why don't we have him on here to explain himself? I think think we need to start here uh, by talking about the SEC because there are four teams that are definitively at the top of that league. They played each other back-to-back games, back-to-back windows. Uh, It was awesome. So, um, Goodman, I'm going right back to you on this one, man. What, What? Give me, give me your biggest takeaway from this Kentucky-Arkansas game. Is Arkansas now the team to beat in this league? They've won 13 of the last 14 games. No, there, there's no team to beat in this league. That's what this shows to me is, you know, as, as important it was for Arkansas, and it was, to beat Kentucky coming into town in, in a crazy environment. And, you know, listen, the, the, the bottom line is J.D. Note has established himself as a National Player of the Year candidate. I've said it. I mean, he really has. You watch him today in the biggest game of the year for them, and you know they've reeled off 13 in the last 14 now. To me, beforehand, when you weren't winning, you can't be considered. But now that they're winning, you know they're probably on the fringe of, of a top 10, 12, 15 team. Uh, you have to put uh, him in the conversation. But, you know, the other thing is for Kentucky, listen, 
they just got Severe Wheeler and Ty Ty back. Okay, so let's not put too much stock into this loss. In fact, I was super impressed that you could go into Fayetteville and play until the end in, in again, a crazy environment with your two guards coming back after having missed the last week or two, uh, not practicing, not playing. I thought it was a great performance by Oscar Sheboy. You want to talk about 30 and 18, and it just seemed like two national player of the year candidates just going nuts. Yeah. J.D. Note, man, his ability to get off the dribble anywhere he wanted, what he end up with, 30? And he was fantastic, 30 points, eight assists. Like, wherever he wherever he decided to attack, he could get to those spots. And it just showed the versatility, too. And a guy that a guy that a lot, a lot of people are talking about, uh, the Williams kid, the five-man for Arkansas. How Jaylen. impressive has he yeah. been? Yeah, Jalen Williams, man. Like, that he's guy. He's a beast. He's a beast. beast, and he can pull you out a little bit. Yep. He's got some face-up game to him. And that's the kind of guy you have to have when you go up against a guy like Sheboy. you got to try to find a way to space him out defensively. He had that, and he had a point in the second half, guys. I think he ended up scoring 12 points in a row whenever Arkansas was trying to make their big run in order to close out that game. Really impressive game all around. Bud Walton Arena, haven't been to that place. Need to get to that place. Woo pig soup. I mean, <laughs> yeah, big they, time atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Arkansas has won uh, 13 of their last 14 games. And in that stretch, they've beaten Auburn mm -hmm. and Tennessee and now Kentucky in that building. Uh, Ryan, I want to go to you because we haven't gotten your take yet on the show uh, for this Kentucky team. How good do you think they are? Um, how does, does a, lo a loss like this concern you at all in terms of what their ceiling can be? Can they win a national title? Can be all the takes. Yeah, I mean, I think Kentucky obviously can still win, you know, a title, obviously going into that arena. I mean, all road games in college basketball are tough, especially when you go in there and that those fans seem like they are out of their mind. They are passionate. And, I mean, yeah, just like, you know, T.O. just said about Williams, I mean, his last six games he's had a double-double in every game. And the face-up, I think, with, you know, with Sheway bothered him. You know, he's working so hard on the offensive, deep, defensive glass. If he's got to go to the perimeter and try to stick a guy who can go by him from 14 feet like Williams was – you know, it's, it's hard for him to, you know, keep pace with that. So, I mean, overall, both teams are really good. I think they're both title contenders, honestly. I mean, defense from Arkansas never rests, it seems like, and Kentucky's got weapons everywhere. But Grady needs yeah, more want, than three shots, I think. I, I want to make one point really quick on Jalen Williams while, while we're on it. Since uh, during this run, um, I think our producer, Dagan Hughes, gave us a stat. Uh, Jalen Williams is averaging 14.5 points in, their, in, in the last 14 games when they're on this run. Uh, in the, at the start of the season, um, when Arkansas was struggling, he was averaging like four and a half points a game last year, right? Arkansas went on a similar run down the stretch of the season where they lost four out of five in, in January. And then they just caught fire. And I think they won, I think it was 15 out of 17 that they won before getting tripped up by Baylor in the elite eight. Uh, and when that happened, that was when Justin Smith got healthy, when they were able to go to that small lineup and become really difficult to guard Goodman. So how much, how much do you think that has a factor or is this just a, you know, must be and must in figuring this thing out. Well, I think the big thing is, is must going big. You know, I talked to him the other day about that. And he said, listen, I went, had to do something different because they weren't winning. They weren't winning early. And, and they threw Trey Wade in there to be able to go big at every spot. And, and at a time and era in basketball where everybody wants to play small, he went bigger. And again, I think it helped because, you know, with Kentucky, again, you can give Shibwe hits. What they did today, they made sure Kellen Grady didn't get off. Yep. He, he had three field goal attempts, right? He had three shots the entire game. They face guarded the hell out of him to make sure he couldn't get anything easy. So then really you take away him. Well, you don't, you knew Ty Ty was coming back after missing time. Who else do they have that can really make shots from the perimeter? Nobody, nobody. So it was a great game plan by Eric Musselman. And listen, Everybody listening, everybody watching right now, you have to stick around for the afters tonight because we have a special, special guest that you are not <laughs> going to want to miss, an Arkansas fan, a big, big Arkansas fan. And no, it is not Eric Musselman. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's going to be good. I think I know who that's going to end up being. Uh, let's pivot really quick, T.O. I'm going to you on this one. Uh, Auburn goes into Tennessee. They get knocked off. They were up by 11 midway through the second half, and, our, and, and Tennessee went on a big run. I don't know what exactly what it was, but it was some, somewhere near uh, about 50 to 2. It's, it was something like that. And uh, so what is, your, what is your takeaway there? Are you worried about Auburn? Do you still think that this is a team that can get to a Final Four, win a national title? Because I'm not going to lie, I have my questions about them. 
Well, I've got I've got questions too, and a lot of them come out to Wendell Green. I mean, today he ends up going two for fifteen, and he's kind of been the constant here. And I love the fact that Bruce Pearl's sticking with him. Like, don't get me wrong, because you're going to need Wendell Green well, to hit what, big what shots. What choice does he have, Dio? Yeah, right. What choice? That's right. That's right. Point guard play. Point guard play. Point guard and play. and, and he's a guy two of fifteen. <laughs> like, you yeah. can't have that out of him. Like, maybe take his shots down by five, but this is a team that has all the talent in the world. Defensively, they're still going to be able to get into you. But here's the thing about Tennessee and Thompson Bowling Arena. You want to talk about an underrated venue? They were 24,000 deep in there, and there was an energetic fan base. And they've always been like that, especially when football sucks, because football sucks right now. But, like, I just have to dig that one in because I'm from right up the road. But it was like, <laughs> here's the thing, too. Oh, you're from Tennessee? Tennessee. I am from Tennessee. Was from Tennessee. But, but, wow. but, but Tennessee's Tennessee physicality, baby. that's it, Charlie Benson. Uh, Tennessee's physicality bothered them. And it not only bothered their guards, but it bothered their front court a little bit. Because if you look at Jabari Smith's numbers, he ended up going nine for 21. He was six of 15 at one point because they just kept getting into him. He got a technical foul against Euros Plavsic, who his only job is to be physical and use all five fouls for that team. They got under their skin a little bit. And whenever you have big, beefy five men like Tennessee does have, you can bother Auburn a little yeah. bit. I still think Auburn wins on a neutral site. But at the same time, you got to give credit to Tennessee because of their physicality on defense. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. That was kind of what I you know, alluded to earlier. I think, I mean, Kessler and Smith, they got 13 rebounds between the two of them. You know, Fulkerson had nine. Huntley had eight. Uh, Plav, Plavzic, uh, the seven footer had seven. You know they they got crushed in that second half. I think it was an eleven zero run in between the, the sixteen and the twelve media or something around that. So it's like, yeah, they just got bullied on the glass. I, the I worry about Green. I've said it all year, and, and Bruce Pearl was the one who first kind of, you know, reiterated it to me because I asked him in the preseason about it, and, and he said, "Listen, I, I don't know how good these guys are." but I'm not sure they're good enough that we can finish in the top five in the SEC. Obviously he was wrong about that, but again, green, he started the season shooting 42% from the field, 35 from, from three, but he made big shots, right? Yeah. He just had a, a tendency to make big shots when it mattered. Well, now he's shooting 32% from the field, 27 from three since January 19th. And you know what he's done? He's made poor decisions and he hasn't made big shots. So that's the difference to me is Kessler's playing better than he did earlier in the season. Jabari's playing just as well. He's just not getting the ball as much when Wendell Green is not making those kind of crazy, you know, buckets or, or, you know, passes that he was making earlier in the year. Yeah, I mean, he's not, he's not Stephen Curry. That, that's the thing about it. Like Wendell Green. He doesn't is know Wendell who he Green, is. Right. He doesn't. He, he needs to right. realize that he is Wendell Green. Right. Yeah. You're not Steph Curry. You, you don't we don't need 28 foot step backs. It's just not that's not a good shot. But and Rob, but Bruce, Rob, I, the problem is he made him earlier in the year. So he problem. thought that was the it's fool's gold. Green right. Night. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're 100 percent right, which is why, T.O., we've talked about this. Zepp Jasper. I think he's the guy. But he, he is the he's the guy that you could bring in that can kind of control stuff and settle this yeah. down. Yeah. which is why I was kind of shocked towards whenever Tennessee was making that run, why Zep wasn't in the game. But here's the thing, too, guys. They were trying to enter some offense with Zep at the point. He couldn't make the entry pass because Tennessee's small guards were getting up into him. So with such, like, up underneath his legs, he couldn't make the pass in there. Point guard plays an issue, and it's an issue for a lot of teams around the country this year. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing the Jeff Goodman. Point guard play. Point guard play. Guard play. <laughs> give, me the, give me the point guard play button right now. I'm using it. But Hey, I, Ryan it's, Daly – Ryan Daly was like, whatever you needed him to be, point forward, point guard, whatever, whatever Swiss it was, Army right? Absolutely. Yep. As long, well, as, 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 long as he was allowed to shoot, as long as he was allowed to shoot, that's what it was. <laughs> well, here's that. If I had the green light, it was whatever. Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing, too. Jabari Smith can be that for you. He could bring the ball up, but you got to get it to him in scoring position because he's your best scorer, too. So, like, who's going to be that guy? Can Alan Flanagan spotlight at the point for you? This Auburn team's no. got some things to figure out. See, that's an issue. Like, who yeah. are you going to put in there? And we're Katie so Johnson's late. too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We're so late in the year now to go through it. It almost would have been better if they had some of these issues earlier in the year. And, and Bruce Pearl could have seen it because I think it was so good early in the year. You couldn't. What were you going to tell Wendell Green? You couldn't. Again, now you're trying to tell him, all right, here's the right play. And, and in his mind, he's played at EKU, Eastern Kentucky, where he was able to do whatever he wanted and succeed. 
and mm-hmm. earlier this year was the same thing. So I, I don't know how Bruce is going to figure this thing out down the stretch. I, I will. I will just make one point though. Auburn has lost three of their last six. All of them were on the road, and all of them were uh, basically like one or two possession games. One went to overtime. One was the final possession against Florida where they yeah. could have won it at the end of the game. So it's not like they are getting run out of the gym. It's it's right. it's small margins, right? But the problem is when your issue is point guard play, those small margins and those those close endings it's and those button. final possessions are going to – yeah, that's, that's going to end up being the issue. Listen, we got to pay the bills here really quick. Coming up next, though, I'm going to tell you why Arizona might have just cost themselves a shot at getting a number one seed in this year's tournament. Boo. <laughs> You're clear. All right. Anybody that's watching in the YouTube chat right now, hit that like button. Uh, if we get to 200 likes on this show, uh, I will shotgun this truly, and I will make Ryan Daly shotgun a beer with me. I know, I know, he's got something in the fridge over there. See, that's that's funny because oh I was God. gonna hop, I was gonna hop in here and ask the first question. I was gonna ask you how many likes it would take for a shotgun, and then this, the second one is everyone wants to see To do it. But I know he's got a big SoCon game tomorrow, so you know we don't want to get. Yes, To's got. He's got to go to bed. Huge. He's got a huge SoCon game. Huge SoCon. Huge SoCon. <laughs> um, all right, we got any questions coming in? Uh, y- yes, we do. Um, what does Tech need from TJ Shannon to be a Final Four team? One minute. They need him to be consistent and healthy. That that's the biggest thing. Is he has he's been neither, so you never knew kind of what you're going to get. And I think he needs to understand kind of his role on this team now. Like they can win without him. They don't need him to win. So now I feel like you got to be a piece. You're not the guy on this team. There is no guy on this team. I'm not sure. I think to, I think he needs to be somebody they can go to at the end of the game or at the end of the clock that can create something. And, and that's, that's fair. Right. Yeah. That That's fair. But again, to 30. me, yeah. Well, he's the best guy on their team to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah we just got a question. If the Zags lose, who is number one next week? Uh, Gonzaga, because yeah, the probably. five teams behind them right. lost two. <laughs> 15. Right. What, what, what are we doing here? Of course, it's going to be Gonzaga. Number yeah, one. no matter what, Gonzaga is number one. Uh, how many likes are we at now, Dagan? Do we get do we get any further? Five seconds. We're at fifty-seven. All right, here you go. And we are back. This is the Field of sixty-eight after dark. You're listening to us on Sirius XM channel eighty-four. That is the ESPNU station. We're also live over on YouTube. If you're watching there, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in the chat. Ask us some questions. We answer them during breaks. My name is Rob Dosser. I have Jeff Goodman, Terrence Old with me, and Ryan Daly with me. And we got to talk about these number one seeds, man, because three of the four teams that were in line to get a number one seed already lost. The fourth, Gonzaga, who's probably locked in. They could probably lose out and still get a one seed, but they're down by 15 right now at St. Mary's. So, Goodman, I'm going to go to you first on this one. How, how concerned are you about Arizona? They took a 16-point loss at Colorado, they're the <laughs> team whose resume, <laughs> yeah. whose resume is a little bit weak. We got Kerr Goodman over here. Uh, Je- Jeff Creaser or Kerr Goodman? Which one do you like more? I-, I wish I had the accent. If I had the accent, I'd do it. But I, I-, I can't do the Kerr Creaser accent. But what I can say is, if I were Kerr Creaser, I- I- I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried at all because, you know what, I got that swagger. I know that Tubelis and Mathurin are not going to have a game like this again. You know, they were, I think, five or six for 20 from the field combined today. We're playing in altitude. Once we get to back to McHale, to the Pac-12 tournament in Vegas, just make sure I don't go out on the strip gambling. All right, somebody's got to watch me, but we're going to be just fine. I'm not worried at all. See, I would, I would, I'm not really either, Dolster. Because what you said earlier this year, earlier this year, playing that Colorado, Utah, back to back with Utah, I mean. They demolished Utah, and then they're a little bit lethargic playing at altitude, like Jeff said. Like you can't get a triple double from Kerr every day, and so the, it was senior night at Colorado too. Like that's a big part of it. Yeah. So all of that contextual stuff makes sense, but here's here's what I'll tell you: that they have right now five quadrant one wins. Right. This is their worst loss on the season. This is a quad two loss. Uh, Baylor right now, who's another team kind of on that C two line, looking to climb their way up, has eleven. Quadrant one wins. To well, me, that's, Arizona's in the Pac-12. It stinks. Exactly, I get it. Exactly. I get no, it. But what, what, yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. You might get it. You might get it, Goodman. But what could happen there is all of a sudden, if they drop to that two seed line, Ryan, you know what's going to happen? They're going to end up having to play Gonzaga just to get to the Elite Eight. 
Yeah, you got to avoid that. I mean, you got to avoid having having to play again. You want to be a one because you you've earned that. You worked for that the last month. But I, I still think again, if they can win out from here and it, they play USC next, I think. Right? They have USC next. I can't uh, yeah, they they are at USC on Tuesday. Then they get Stanford and Cal at home. So they got three games in five days coming off of the road trip to the mountains. That's not going to be that's tough. Not, that's not easy. No, it's going to be tough. Not easy. <laughs> that, that, right. that is going to, that's going to wear on your legs a little bit. Yeah. So um, let, me, let me, Ryan, let me ask you this overall big picture. Are you worried about what Arizona can be at their ceiling or is this just kind of, you know, something that's going to be a ding on their resume? Yeah, I think that it's definitely going to be a ding on the resume more so than it is like, the, you know, the, the world's fallen. Obviously, Colorado, Tad Boyle, he, he's been coaching there forever and they're always good. You know, it's a road game. That's always unfortunate. Um, I mean, I love Arizona. I think Matherin's awesome. And I think Coloco, I mean, defensively, he's a monster. So long term, I think they have the pieces to you know, match up with all these teams, these one and these two seeds. But I mean, yeah, obviously they would have liked to, you know, had a better offensive output than they did today. They were struggling a little bit today. Yeah. All right. I teased it a little bit. Uh, Kansas went into Baylor and they jumped out to a, I believe they were up by 14 in the first half. It was 13 or 14 points. It looked like they were getting ready to run away, run away with that thing. Uh, and Baylor came storming back. They cut it to one at the half. They jumped out to a lead early in the second. Bill Self got a technical foul and they kind of slowly, methodically pulled away to yo, despite the fact that LJ Cryer did not play and Jonathan Jamwachachwa is, uh, is out for the rest of the season. So, how about those Bears, man? It was nice to see them kind of clicking at full gear again, right? Yeah, and, and scoring. I mean, 80 points doesn't come out of nowhere, especially against the Bill Self coach team. But here's the thing that I thought was interesting. You got full exposure to what it was going to be like with Jeremy Sohan playing at the five because McCormick had a nice night, ended up with 13 boards and 10 points, 13 boards. And then you could still – you so Han to pull out the guard. So that's one of the reasons why the offense is, or pull out the bigs. That's one of the reasons why the offense was functioning at such a high level. And they were able to knock down shots. And in the first half, Kansas was running. That's when they got out to their lead. Whenever they were able to knock down shots, they got to back to play in half court defense and Baylor. So switchable and so big around the perimeter, especially when their guards aren't, aren't all healthy that man, they can cause some problems. And so Han at that five positions, he's a matchup nightmare. I, and he can, you're going to give up some things as far as physicality is concerned. But with his length, he can get out there and switch and do some th different things defensively. He's a heck of a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Goodwin, what's your what's your take on Kansas? Can they Are they still number one seed worthy? I mean, they're probably going to end up winning the Big 12. I actually love them now. I, I love them coming off this better than I did a week ago, two weeks ago, because I saw Remy Martin back on the court. And I don't need to see him for 30 minutes anything like that, but I want to see him because the one thing with Harris is he, he's not an offensive threat at all. So I love having Remy Martin coming off the bench with similar speed. And that's what I was looking for today when Remy Martin was in the game, because the last time we saw him, he could barely move. He was a shell of himself, but I thought he had that burst today offensively. Again, wasn't great, but he played about 10 minutes and, and he showed that speed. Now Jalen Wilson was terrible today. I mean, Bill Self, I don't even know the words. You can't even repeat them, what he was yelling at Jalen Wilson. But he was atrocious. Uh, Igbaji was good, but not great. And, and I think that combination, to me, I just think they've got enough pieces. McCormick's been much better, right? We wanted that. Now you bring Remy Martin He's, back in the McCormick's fold. banged up, too, though. That's the problem. They got, they got a lot of guys that are kind of banged up on that group. Listen to everybody, position, though. Like, Ryan, Kevin everybody's hurt right now. This everybody's time of year, right Ryan, this time of year, how many guys are, are fighting through it, playing hurt, you know, just yeah. trying to get ready for, for, for the stretch drive here? Yeah, I mean, if you're playing 25 minutes a game, even 20 minutes a game since November, and you're, you know – Rounding out the last week of your conference, you're going to have aches and bruises, sprained ankles. Are you are you hurt or are you injured, basically? Because you're going to have some bumps and bruises on you, no matter who you are. So the only thing with Kansas that scares me a little bit is if McCormick ever goes in foul trouble, they're like if they're in the tournament, you know, if they play Purdue and McCormick gets two early ones and he's got to deal with Williams and Idiot, it's like, all right, like who are we turn into kind of. But I mean, other than that, yeah. Kansas is, yeah. So, but. No, nah, I mean, I still have nightmares from Braun. I was telling you guys about that earlier. So tell that story. Tell that story. Yeah, we played. So we played Auburn and Kansas last year on a back to back. We were in Fort Myers, Auburn. Uh, we took them to overtime. Uh, so we were already banged up and we played Kansas. And 
I was guarding Braun, you know, the scout report, Agba, you know, he's their, their guy. And Braun hit me with three threes back to back to back and was in my ear just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> and he had my respect. He was dunking on dudes that game. That, that kid can play. He can really, really play. <laughs> and, and listen, you don't look like it, but he doesn't look like it just as much as you don't look like you can play, right? Yeah, no, we, we definitely look like, you know, 1940s out there. <laughs> we, were, we set the game back a little bit aesthetically. Let's, let's talk about Baylor a little bit too, because I, I do think that they're – so they're, I think without LJ Cryer, the shooting has been the big issue for them offensively, right? Like there's just no spacing, and you don't get that vertical spacing threat with, with Chamba Chachua because Thamba is like a, a land warrior. He's not a guy catching lobs. And I think that's part of the reason why Akinjo has been struggling a little bit and why you've seen Kendall Brown a little bit limited. Like they're just – they're a very different team when they are playing guys like Dale Bonner and whoever uh, whoever they're, they're – uh, Zach yeah, Loveday. Dale Bonner. What, yeah, yeah, when Dale Bonner and Zach Loveday are out there instead of LJ Cryer and Jonathan Chamba Chachua. But – you know, you go out and you 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 beat up on Kansas like this, Tio. What do you still think that this is a group that can get to a Final Four? I think it's going to be hard. I think Jamal Chachua means a lot more than than people realize, just because he's the captain defensively when he was in the game. Like he's their lead communicator. He was calling out all the ball screens. When I saw them down in the Bahamas, he was the guy communicating everything on the weak side of the floor, and that's significant. You've seen it with different teams around the country, like. Malik Osborne at Florida State, he gets injured, he's done for the year. You see what's happened to them. They've fallen off a cliff. Yeah. And the fact that Baylor has so much talent besides him says a lot. Now, they only played seven guys tonight. Now, that worries me a little bit. You get LJ Cryer back, yeah. it's obviously going to help things. But the Sohan thing is just it, – it remains the most intriguing piece to me, playing him at the five. Because we they've been struggling a little bit with spacing and too much dribbling, bringing – him out to the perimeter playing the five gives you some different things that Scott Drew can do offensively. And as that progresses, I'd like to see obviously one or two more guys get some minutes because guys, that tournament's a grind all the way through. I mean, it, it's just how that's just the nature of the beast. You need probably need a little bit more depth than six guys playing significant minutes. So when I was out there, uh, what was it a week ago, a week ago now, For two, weeks Taylor, ago. two weeks ago, I don't know what it feels like. Um, we were talking about Cryer. I was talking to Scott Drew about him for a while. And he said, you know, one of the things, the problem with his foot is they got to get the pain down as much as they can before they can bring him back. Well, they brought him back. He played a game and then he's out again. So that, that concerns me. I wonder again, I, I'm trying not to play doctor here, but I wonder if, if again, LJ Cryer might not be able to come back the rest of the season because they felt like, all right, they're going to try to get the pain down as low as they can. Then hopefully he's going to be able to come back and he'll be able to stay on the court. Well, that wasn't the case. And as Tio said, I think they need all their pieces. I, I think you need a strong seven-man rotation, right? And they even without JTT, if they have their seven, I think they're able to do it. But now you're going to six. They, they can't go deep in the tournament with six dudes and, and Bonner being your seventh. Yeah, the issue is you just don't get the spacing, uh, you know, and, and as much as it hurts losing JTT, I do think that they've gone with some of these lineups where Jeremy Sohan is kind of playing at the five, almost like a point five role. Um, and it, it it opens things up and it gives you a different look. And all of a sudden you have all of this length and athleticism and switchability and, and, and stuff all over the floor. Um, all right, let's go big picture here. Ishi, uh, we got 30 seconds each. Ryan, I'm going to you first on this one. You have to bet your life savings on one team from the Big 12 make it to the Final Four. Who is it? Kansas. I would say Kansas. I think their wings are good. I think they have, you know, three or four guys who can win a game for them. And I think that in March, you need, you need that. T.O.? Yeah. Give me the Red Raiders down there in Lubbock. <laughs> Ooh. Man, they guard and hey, you got to play physical in the tournament. Those dudes are physical and Terrence Shannon's coming along. It's got to be, he's, I, and here's the thing. I think he's got to be a guy that they can go to in isolation situations at the end of shot clocks. Like if he can be that guy, Texas tech defends well enough. They're going to be in every game. They got to have somebody that can close. Who is their closer? If they find a closer, they could be in the final four. Goodman. All right. So Mark Adams might be the national coach of the year, but he ain't in the hall of fame yet. I'm taking the so. guy in Lawrence. Yep. Yeah, I, I flip flop on this. I feel like daily, but I, I, I think I'm leaning towards Kansas right now, too. It just uh, see, feels now, like they've kind I of. I just feel ganged up on. Like, a, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, but I'll tell you very, what, I'll tell you what, if they get to, CL, if they, it's, it's very hard to back the team that just lost to TCU. Okay. Like all due respect <laughs> to Jamie Dixon. I just watched Texas tech blow a 10 point lead to TCU. So I, I, I can't go there. I can't go there. Uh, listen, we gotta, we gotta pay the bills really quick, but uh, coming up next, we got to talk a little Purdue and we got to talk a little bit about those red Raiders. I'm going to tell you why the Boilermakers are set to be knocked out in the first week of the tournament. Hey, Mike Miles is like the perfect guy to play against somebody like that side defense, that no middle defense, because you have to have somebody that can score over the top in the mid range. Sometimes if you can play one on one, like you can give them problems. Problem is they're already early rotated. And if you have somebody like Miles who can shoot it a little bit over the top, like you can give him some problems. He ended up with what, 26 today. He was good. He's really good. Really yeah, good. good. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're uh, watching right now on YouTube, go hit that like button. Like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I have a truly right here that I will shotgun. If we get to 200 likes, uh, Ryan Daly has already committed to doing a shotgun with me. Um, I don't want to challenge him. I I don't want to challenge him to a race because uh, I I would get my ass kicked, but one minute. um, Dagan, we got any questions in the chat? Yes. Yes, we do. We have one. Who is the best road slash neutral team in the country? Road slash neutral. I'm going with, uh, with Wisconsin. You have to, yeah. baby. It took, not mine. Yeah, it took mine. <laughs> not even close. That tells you his consensus. If all of us agree, if all go. of us the are Badgers, agree, baby. Not, not that my opinion. The Badgers. Is, but I also 30 seconds. <laughs> Come on. Dagan, your opinion doesn't matter until you're on camera. True, true, true. That's a good point. Um, you kind of Cut here. it to 10. The Zags. They've made some really dumb turnovers. Like, Look, really dumb. Like this. One I think right Timmy here. just 15. thinks he can play with them here and toy with them. Yeah, they had a he had a three second violation that was not great. Ten. So, all right, five seconds. He's overrated. <laughs> we are back. It's the field of sixty eight after dark. We are live right now on Sirius XM channel eighty four. That is the ESPN U station. We are streaming live over on YouTube. If you are watching there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in the chat, ask us some questions. It's going a little bit nuts right now. My name is Rob Dosser. I have Ryan Daly, Terrence Oglesby, and Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman. And we got to talk about those Purdue Boilermakers because they went on the road and they lost to a Michigan State team that had dropped five of their last six, three in a row, and had some people questioning whether or not this was a team that was going to make it into the NCAA tournament. Ryan. How worried should we be about Purdue right now? I think you, you have to be worried, truthfully. I, I mean, I they what are, so they have five losses. I, I believe they're all in conference, right? So they were. I think they ran through their non-conference pretty, and they were fine. I mean, I was worried Look, just looking at the game. I mean, Stefanovic over three. You know, the shooting one of nine from three. That's that's not going to get it done. I don't care if you have the twin towers down there. I mean, it, it's still you know. I mean, I thought they were going to go into Michigan State and win. You know, I think Michigan State. I. I haven't been very high on this year, um, but, you know, that got, gutsy win by them. But, yeah, I think Purdue's got to start, you know, answering the bell a little bit, truthfully. I thought Julius Marble came in and did a great job on some of those bigs. Like, he was strong. He was physical. He did a lot of things. I'm worried about Purdue because offensively we know they can go, and if they don't have a good night offensively, a lot of teams need to rely on their defense. They're in the hundreds defensively. And you can disguise a lot of those things, Ryan, by having guys that can score it. But the problem is you better get some timely stops. And that shot today by Tyson Walker at the end of the game, that was big time. And I thought I thought the matchup was weird. I'm never questioning uh, Coach Painter, ever. I'm not questioning him. But Michigan State went really small, and Travion Williams was still out there. So he ends up shooting over the top. Obviously, it was a tough shot. But uh, you got to get stops, man. In the tournament, you're not going to be able to score every game. You got to find ways to get stops. I thought it spoke a volume. I thought it spoke volumes about what this Purdue team is, because you play tough competition in a ruckus environment. You got to get stops, and they weren't able to do so today. So I've been high on the Boilermakers. You guys know this. Today, I'm starting to. I'm not completely jumping off the bandwagon, but I got a foot off, and I'm looking for the next stop sign. I think I'm off the bandwagon. I think I am for a couple of reasons. One. There are two teams that this that this group reminds me of. One of them is last year's Iowa, right? Great offensive team, big lumbering five man, uh, couldn't guard anybody. Got knocked out in the second round by Oregon. They also remind me of that 2012 Missouri team. Remember Frank Hayes' first year? 
where he came in. They had Ricardo Ratliff surrounded by four shooters. They were the best offense in the country. And where the hell finished, are you pulling that from? They no, finished no, the year. Good. They finished. They finished the year rated 154th in defensive efficiency on Kempom. They couldn't good guard you, him. Doster. And good do you know you. what happened? Wow. Do you know what happened in the first round? What happened in the first round of the tournament that year? Ryan Daly was they eight lost. years old when that happened, but he might know. <laughs> yeah, they lost. Right? Were they a two seed? Yeah, they were a two seed. They lost to Norfolk State Norfolk. and Kyle, Kyle O'Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, and Kyle O'Quinn. So those are the two teams that this Purdue group reminds me of. I got one the more. Kimmy English. Goodman. Did Kimmy English uh, text you about that? No, but he probably will right now to yell at me <laughs> about bringing it back up. Um, there, there's two other, There's one other thing that worries me, right? So we talk about how they don't really have great point guard play. Isaiah Thompson tonight. Play, play point guard 15, play. Isaiah Thompson right. played 15 minutes off the bench and didn't register a single stat anywhere. No shots, no turnovers, no yeah, steals, he was Mark no Titus fouls, today. no rebounds. He had a 15 trillion. Ethan, Ethan Morton played 19 minutes off the bench today. He had two rebounds and one steal, and that was it. That was the only thing that he did. That's hard to do. And when one Very. of your point guards, one of your most important players, is not literally not doing a damn thing when he's on the floor, that's a problem. Yeah, I, I felt like when we saw them back in, early in the season, I felt like Payne had his rotations. Now, the point guards were making shots, okay? They were making shots. They were left wide open. And, and whether it was, you know, Thompson or Hunter, they were making shots back then. I also thought it was almost better when they had Caleb first because he was really good. And I thought he was going to progress. And then Gillis came back and, you know, they've kind of tried to figure Morton. They got a bunch of different dudes now that they're rotating in. I'm not sure Payne has his kind of rotation down. Everybody else this time of year, I feel like the best teams have their eight-man rotation right now. And when you're playing 10 guys and you don't know who's playing each night and kind of the roles, now, again, it, it still gets back to point guard play and defense, ultimately, for Purdue. Those are the two things that matter the most. But I want to see more of Caleb first. I thought he was really, really good early as a, as a young kid. And, and, again, he's kind of stagnated because of those other guys. Yeah, I, I, I just – I can't buy into a team that can't guard. Um, you know who can guard? The Texas Tech Red Raiders. We talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but I, I do think that they – you can make the argument they're the best defensive team in college basketball. I believe they're still first on Ken Palm despite the loss that they got at TCU tonight. But there's that big question about point guard play. So what, what, does, what does that group need to do to kind of get this thing steadied a little bit? We saw them on Tuesday, uh, or maybe it was last week, when they played Texas, they were up big and they ended up blowing a lead uh, and, and they almost ended up losing tonight. They ended up losing after they blew that lead. Ryan, what, what, what does Texas Tech need to do to kind of solidify uh, their late game scenario so that they, they don't end up blowing these leads? Yeah, I just think it comes down. I think they're, they're always going to hang their hat on that defense. I mean, they're, they swarm everywhere. They're rotating. They're great at that. I think uh, their, their main question is always going to be off half court offense. Um, I mean, today, you know, they, 66 points, you know, shot 58% from the field, which is good. But down the end of the stretch, like, who would you say their guy is? I guess, you know, who, like, you want to give me a bucket or end a shot clock, you know, who, who can I count on to get to the line? Maybe I don't know who that would be. Defensively, they're unreal, though. So they, they'll be in every game. That's, that's the reason the I feel thing. like, yeah, Terrence Shannon has to be that guy. Uh, did, did I say that in the break? I get them all mixed up. Was that you the did. break? Yeah so, yeah. so here's the thing. Like, Terrence Shannon has to be that guy at the end of the clock because they have a bunch of guys that can work within an offense. Like uh, Adonis Arms is somebody who, if he's catching it on a closeout, he can get somewhere. Uh, Kevin O'Banner needs to be able to catch and shoot, or he needs to be able to catch in one dribble to make something happen. Terrence Shannon needs to be that guy at the end of the clock. And if you look at this TCU team uh, that ended up beating him by three at home, like Mike Miles is the kind of guy that can shoot over top of that was it, the, the, the no middle defense because he's shooting before he gets to that help. So whenever you're pressur pressuring so high, like you do in that defense, if you're able to get to that mid-range and shoot over the top, you're going to have some opportunities. He was fantastic tonight. Ends up with 26 and, all, and shot great percentage. What was he, 10 of 15? And if you do that against Texas Tech, you're a dude. I don't care where it's at. You're playing at home away. You do it against Texas Tech, and they're so switchable. With Mike Miles being able to score – the way he does, you're taking away a lot of what Texas Tech is good at, and that's taking you out of your offense because you have an ISO score. Listen, yeah. I, I love them. I love what they've done and what Mark Adams can do defensively, but I do, I do worry about it because, again, if you don't have a dude, 
You know, like how far can you go with Kevin McCullough and TJ Shannon and not knowing who your guy is and how you're going to be able to manufacture points? Because again, it gets, it gets tighter in, in, in the NCAA tournament. It just does. Right. And you're not going to be able to, you know, you, yes, you'll be able to guard, especially in that, that turnaround game, the quick turn game. I think a lot of teams are going to have trouble, but maybe if you have time to prepare, it's going to be a little bit easier. Maybe you've seen a defense like his before, because a lot of teams are starting to play the Mark mm -hmm. Adams defense. Now you're seeing it again, obviously beard, but other teams like, uh, 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 North Texas. Baylor, Baylor did Baylor. a lot, but right. it's also it's no one's going to do it like Texas like they Tech do. does it right. because Texas nobody nobody in the country has has nine guys that are six six with seven foot wingspans and two hundred thirty pounds of solid muscle yeah. like they got a bunch of defensive ends out there that can guard anybody that it's literally what it is they have defensive ends out there that can guard anybody now again if you look at the teams that made the final four and that made the elite eight when Chris Beard had them who was on those rosters Keenan Evans. Big 12 player of the year. Jarrett Culver was a was a first round. What was he? Number six pick, right? Matt six. Mooney was a 23 year old grad transfer. That was a stud that uh, ended up playing in the NBA for a little bit. Those were the dudes that you could go to at the end of a clock. Right now, it's like, what do you did you see the shot that TJ Shannon took at the end, like down by three? The the shot that he got yeah. with 11 seconds left. It was a horrible shot. It made Wendell Green shot to uh, decision making look good. Uh, Adonis Arms is not a guy that you necessarily want isolating and going creating something. So uh, I, I do think that there's is, is there is there a bigger bigger takeaway from this? Just the the lack of point guard play is that going to create more situations for upsets this season, Jeff? Yeah, I mean it, it should it should. I don't I don't know. I mean, again, I feel like if you have one, and and that's why I still a team we haven't talked about today because they didn't play is Villanova. But I feel like if you have one that's reliable, that's experienced, that, again, Villanova just doesn't beat themselves. I, I feel like in the tournament, you just you trust a player like that, a player like Colin Gillespie. How many of those guys are there? Like, we thought Akinja was one. He's not. He can't make a shot anymore. You know, Andrew Nemhard's good. Like, I, there just aren't – there aren't any. There aren't any. That's why I still feel like Villanova might be able to win another damn title. I don't know. I, I I can't go that far. They don't have any pro right. roster. But I, I do think I, I think we're underrating Andrew Nemhard if you don't think that he's really, really good. I'm, I'm I there think with he's you really, too. really good. I do. I do. This year, I think he's really, really good. And he's really, really good for Gonzaga. How's that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly right. And he was really good against their good competition. Right. In the pre conference yep. and everything yep. like that. Like his he ability awesome to handle tempo. Put, yeah, either push it or, or know when to slow it down for some of his bigs. I thought he was terrific. It, yeah, if you look Ryan. at the teams that have point guards, Gonzaga, Kentucky, the tie, and that's if they're completely healthy. I, I like the way Kentucky's going, too. So you throw them in that mix. Yeah, Ryan, you played against that Gonzaga team last year, didn't you? Were you, were you in that same event, or you just saw them up close? No, we, 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 they played, uh, no, we played Auburn and Kansas. They played Kansas and – Auburn. We didn't play Gonzaga, though. No, we, I saw them, but we didn't play them. Yeah, so that was a bad segue by me. Good job hosting, right, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so we got Gonzaga here. They're down by seven with five minutes left. That looks like it's going to end up being a fun, uh, fun end. But we got to pay the bills here in a minute. Uh, when we come back, coming up next, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the teams that have a chance to climb up to that number one seed line now that five of the top six teams in college basketball lost. And you're clear. All right. Uh, just a reminder for people that are listening right now in the chat. Uh, if you hit that like button and we can get to 200 likes, I will shotgun a truly on the stream. And Ryan Daly will join me and shotgun a beer, too. I have um, some water I over. I have some water over here. If you want me to do the same thing uh, as you're doing, Doster. <laughs> hey, look, if we get to 300 likes, I'm going to make Goodman shotgun a beer. I don't have a beer up here right now. So. Or at least chug a beer or something. Uh, Dagan, we got any questions uh, in the chat? Yes, we do. This one I'm picking out specifically for, for Jeff because this is his guy. The, in the chat, his name is Ken Prom Ken Palm is a fraud. Let's know how far Providence can make it in the tournament. <laughs> uh, I think they could get to an Elite Eight. I do. I don't know if they can get further than that, but I think they can win three and get to an Elite Eight. Uh, Jared Bynum's playing out of his mind right now. Yeah. I mean, he, he just – I don't think he realizes he didn't make any shots. And, and Ryan Daly could talk about Jared Bynum uh, more than I can, but man, he's been unconscious this year. 
irrational confidence guy. Yeah. Like he has been <laughs> he unbelievable. Does. They don't I'm, incredible. Yeah, I'm not seconds. sure about their top end talent daily. Like, I, like, I feel like their pieces fit perfectly, but in order to win a national championship and Providence fans probably gonna hate me for this. I feel like the top end talent probably isn't there, but I think a second weekend is fully in play. Even winning yeah. a game in the second weekend is fully in play because they just fit together. 15. Yeah. in the non-conference, I wasn't sure where their offense was going to come from, 10. like in the, towards March, but now the Jarrett's taking over, you know, mm-hmm. five seconds. We're back. It is the field of 68 after dark. We're on Sirius XM channel 84. That is the ESPNU station. We are streaming live on YouTube. If you're over there right now, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in the chat, ask us some questions. We are monitoring the end of this Gonzaga game. The number one Zags are currently down 57 to 50 on the road at St. Mary's. Uh, If they end up losing this, it means the top six teams in college basketball will all have lost today. And seven of the top 10 that's never happened before uh, in the AP poll era. What that means is that there are some teams kind of on the outside of that one seed line that are going to have a chance to climb up. I think the biggest is probably Duke, but that's not where I want to start this segment. Uh, I want to go to Jeff and I want to go to Wisconsin because you have uh, I don't know. I don't even know if it's a hot take, but you do believe that Wisconsin should at the very least be in the mix for a number one seat, correct? Yeah, I, I don't know how they're not being talked about more for a number one. Well, I do because the stupid metrics have them low and I don't understand it. I mean, look at this shit. Wisconsin in the net, 21. Ken Palm, 26. BPI, 25. Sager in 23. The KPI has got it right. Kevin Pauga and the KPI have it right. They have them at number three. And that's where they should be. That is, I'm going to read you their wins, okay? It's insane. First of all, they're they're 15 and four in quad one and twos. 15, quad one and two. They're seven and three in quad ones. They beat Houston when Houston was real, right? When they were real, when they had Sasser and Mark. Marquette, Indiana, they beat St. Mary's. The St. Mary's team's about to probably knock off Gonzaga and Moraga right now. They've won on the road in Big Ten play in West Lafayette, in East Lansing, in Bloomington, and today at the Rack. I mean, seriously, can you find four more difficult places to win games than those four? They're four for four. They've also beaten Ohio State and Iowa. Like, what more do they need to do? And one of their losses came without their best player and maybe the National Player of the Year in Johnny Davis against Providence at home. Two of their losses at Ohio State, at Illinois. Like, come on, what are we doing here? What what are we doing here? Why aren't they a number one seed? Yes, yes. Tell me. Go ahead. Because, because they the, don't look like a number one seed. That's no, why. It's be, no, it's because yes. it's because of the metrics and because oh, they don't the win the games by enough the, points. Because they, stupidest yeah. damn thing ever. This don't reminds me of when the Miami it Hurricanes with. This reminds me of the Miami Hurricanes whenever Ken Dorsey was the quarterback. And like they were beating the Big East opponents by like a billion, and then they played like some real competition. But like, and then their metrics were always good because you just had to beat the heck out of people. Like it doesn't make sense because Wisconsin they just win, just win, baby. Right. That's all they yes. do, and they got the best player on the floor every night they play. in Johnny Davis, and he showed up tonight. Like he's had a couple of off games, but other guys have been pulling their weight. Like Brad Davison's a really good player. Like they've got some guys, and they're starting to figure it out. I thought the other guard played pretty well, pretty well tonight. Um, Chucky Hepburn. Checky yeah, Hepper. I thought yeah, he was really good. good. I thought he was really good tonight. And they just have different guys step up. Tyler Wall's a heck of a role player. Just does all the little things. This Wisconsin team's good. They're hard. They're hard. Uh, they're they're hard nosed kids, and they really get after you. And they have a go to guy. Yeah, they do. And that's why they can make a run to the uh, to the final four. That's why I think that they can play with anybody in the country. But I, I just don't. Why? I don't think why? Why? Tell me why. Are you, why, why they should why they just aren't read you be a number one seed? I read you because the resume. Of, are do you are you so what, what do you want do you, when you say why? Yes, what are you asking me? Are you asking I'm asking why, you, should why? they be? If you were in the room, if you were in the committee, I'm not forget the goddamn numbers for a minute. Okay, if you're in the, the room, thing, here's the thing you can't for, you're saying forget the numbers, but this is what the committee uses. I'm saying Would you rather have them use be? the RPI. Do you know not how much you complain about the RPI? If you will wanted they the be? R- 
Do you know where you want to know where Wisconsin is right now in the RPI? I don't give a go, shit about the RPI. The, I'm telling you, you I'm telling you, when you're RPI. looking at the resume and you're watching what they've done, do they deserve to be a number one seed? That's they're what I'm fifth, asking you. They're fifth in the RPI right now. I don't give a shit about the RPI. I'm asking <laughs> you if you've watched them play and seen them win in West Lafayette in Bloomington today at the rack. Is the rack a tough place to play, Robert? Shit, yeah. Yeah. So what do you, is, I don't know. Well, ask me a question. You're just right. I've asked ask you the question. question. How many times you am I going to ask you the same damn question? You said why? He's asking you, you, should they be a number one seed right. if you're not, if you're not looking be? at the metrics? I, should they be? They should absolutely be in the conversation. Would I have them as a number one seed as of today? Probably not. Would I have them as a two seed? Yes, I would. Yeah. So you'd have Arizona. You'd have Arizona over Wisconsin today. Probably. Why? I think so. Like, why? Look so. at their resumes. Come on. What are you thinking? You told, hold on. So you you just told me, you just told me when I said that Arizona, when I asked you if Arizona was in danger of falling off the one seed line, and I mentioned that Baylor had 11 quad one wins, you said Even that's Kerr. because they play in the pack. Even 12, Kerr might admit it. Right? Even Kerr so would, would say, say you know what? Your mouth. Wisconsin's you're got a better resume mouth, than us. You're talking out of both sides of your mouth with this. Should Gonzaga be a number one seed because they play in the WCC and they can't land all of the quad one wins that you well, do? They, in, they, the they want enough. They is want enough in the in the preseason. And the WCC is better than the Pac-12. Or as good. Don't yeah. do, do not, not, I, I, not I would agree with that. Do not do not what? What with <laughs> well, I thought Oregon was gonna be good. Oregon's getting season. smacked by everybody. Right. Like I Pac-12 thought Oregon stinks. was gonna be good. It stinks. Pac-12 like Washington stinks. State, everybody was putting some stock in there. Okay, me included. First of, all, first of all, Oregon, Oregon is not getting smacked by everybody. Or, Oregon might end up beating USC tonight. They just beat uh, UCLA. They're at figuring home. it out they a won. little bit. Yeah, they, they've they they apparently Cal's the best team in the country though because Cal was up by like thirty at the half on Stanford. So maybe we're all just idiots and Cal's actually the best team in the country. Can't believe they you have, hate Wisconsin. I just said I would have him as a number two seed. What are you talking about? I'm not, I, just because I don't love the RPI doesn't mean I hate Wisconsin. Okay. We're I just don't with, get it. I just don't understand it. So exactly. So just stop talking about no, it. I do. Understand, I understand, understand it. it. I understand no, it. What, what I'm trying to say is if it, you understood it, you wouldn't be complaining about you it. You got to win games by 50 points. Yeah. So that's the problem with beat using shitty the, teams by 50. So beating okay. shitty teams by 50 so here's is what, better so here's than beating Rutgers at the rack by where they beat so them by five. So here's, so here's what we're going to do. Ryan, go ahead. Ryan, go. No, five, five. I was saying you five. I was telling you they'd be five, five, five points. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's here's so here's what we're gonna do, Goodman. We're gonna scrap the possession base, we're, we're gonna scrap the efficiency based stuff, and we're gonna go to a strictly results-based metric. And you know what that is? That is the RPI. So what you are arguing for right now is to bring the RPI back. When we had the RPI, what you did was you sat there and you argued about how the RPI is dumb. So what they did was they developed the net, which has pieces of the RPI and pieces of Kempom all mushed together so you have a, a resume-based and an efficiency-based metric that allows you to have both of those things. The, you know net what happened is the, the net is the half of what you wanted. Hey, but you're UCLA, sitting here ranting about it because you're not UCLA happy. UCLA beat so Oregon State. UCLA about. beat Oregon State by like 50 today. They went flying up in the net. Why wouldn't they? They beat Oregon State by 50. That was a better win than Wisconsin winning at Rutgers by five. I mean, okay. come on, use yeah. your There's hand. There's something to be said there, so, Doster. So you, know, so, you know, there. so you know what we can do? So point. you know what we're going to do? So let's go back. Let's go back to the RPI. So we, we get, get rid of Nobody's win margins. Saying that. Get rid of efficiency margins. Get so rid of give efficiency. Give me an answer. You get can't rid of just sit here and say when you're up 30 points. Get rid of it. Yes, it do you, should be do you know? Do you know if there is a cap in the net? Do you know? Have you the seen last the I know, you know was there was not. So you don't know. There was not a cap. No. Just say you don't know. Just say, just say you don't no, know. You don't the know. Last right now I was told the there was no cap on efficiency. Okay. So, so should, that's there, what there I should say. probably be a cap on the efficiency. You know where there is a cap on efficiency? Your boy, Kenny Pom Poms. Wow. Kenny Pom Poms has, has boy, Wisconsin. Kenny Pom-Poms. So you, you think they're the 26th best team in the country. I think that if Wisconsin played teams Come in on. front of them just on give a neutral up. court, just throw, by, just go no mas. Just throw throw in the no. towel like Roberto Duran did many years ago and just say no mas because you lost this. No, ma- no, I did not. You don't know. You, what, you, ha- you have no idea what you're talking about. So just just let, let it go. I, I know Wisconsin's not the 26th best team. It is not trying to tell you who the best team is. It is trying to tell you 
who who would win if they played on a neutral court tomorrow? Who would be projected and right. favored? And yes, well, Wisconsin, were, Wisconsin's beaten Purdue in West Lafayette. They've beaten Rutgers at the rack. They've beaten all these teams. I feel like I feel Goodman, like Zach Galifianakis Goodman, just, when he's playing right, blackjack in the Hangover. Let's end. Like you, you know when he sees all the numbers, like I, I'm not smart about enough to keep man. up with the numbers. <laughs> you need you need to stop talking about metrics. I promise you. Let's talk about Duke. Can Duke get up to be on the number one seed line? Ryan, you haven't talked in a while. Ryan. Yeah, no, I let you guys get after that one. Uh, I think. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I think talent wise, I mean, AJ Griffin has been ridiculous. It seems like every time he shoots the ball, it goes in. Uh, I love Mark Williams. Honestly, I think he's really good. I don't want to use, you know, the whole point guard play thing that you guys have been, but I think their point guard play is definitely going to be something that, you know, you got to look out for because they have the size, they have the shooting, they have the stars. It's more so, you know, you need that point guard who's going to stay. And Jeremy Roach has been better. He's been better lately, I think. Uh, but I, I think they're good enough. You know, the, when you're that big and that skilled man, like, and you have three top 20 picks, you know, you should be right there in the end for a one seed slash final four. I think it's entirely plausible that they win their next two. They got Pitt win. I don't care where they play that one. And then North Carolina at home and Coach K's final game at Cameron, they're going to win that one. They're going to run the ACC tournament, and then Duke's yep. going to win that. And then I think they don't have – they're not going to have a choice but to put them as a number one seed. Yeah. That's where, that's I'm, where at I'm at with it. With it. But it yeah, all, it all comes so. down to Mark Williams. It all comes down to Mark Williams. If he can stay on the floor, defensively, they're a completely different team. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, St. Mary's I, now up six with 25 seconds left. Gonzaga's got the ball. They're going to need to make a three here. Charge. Nope. Offensive foul. Gonzaga's Gales gonna are going to end up winning down. this. Make sure yep. you stay tuned. Whoever's listening on Sirius, we will talk about this upset. And now all four projected number one seeds losing today. Probably the first time that's ever happened. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that in the afters once we're it's the uh, first we're done time here. the top is the first time the top six seeds in the eight or top six teams in the AP poll have ever lost on the same day. First time seven top ten teams in the AP poll have ever lost on the same day. It's a wild day in college basketball. I do just want to finish up one point on Duke before we uh, before we're off serious. Um, I, I do I do think that the scenario that To just played out is probably what's going to end up happening with this group. Because Duke's metrics yeah. do look really good, right? They're top five in Ken Palm. They're way up there in the net. Uh, they're going to end up winning the ACC regular season title. They're probably going to end up winning the ACC tournament title because no one else in that conference is very good. I just I, – I, I see that being the way that this thing plays out. Yeah, they're yeah, not going to lose. They're not going to lose again. They're going to win by 20-plus. Right, and I if mean, they do, they're Duke. They're Duke. They're going to get a number one seed. Let's face it, especially with what happened tonight. I think they'll have that momentum. Uh, and, and again, yes, I think they'll get a number one. I think the winner of the Big 12, uh, whoever it is, Kansas or Baylor, will get a number one. Right now it's probably Baylor. And then I, I still think probably whoever wins the SEC probably gets a number one. And I think Wisconsin's yeah. left at a number yeah, two. But listen, but listen, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This has been the Field of 68 After Dark for Ryan Daly. For Terrence Oglesby, for Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman. My name is Rob Doster. Have a great day. Hey, clear. That got real. That got real. We need oh, a Jeff. On. We need a Jeff Goodman index. Yeah, I'm, jump, no, I'm jumping no. in here. The, the chat wants the JGI next year, where Goodman ranks his team yeah. one to thirty-eight. Yeah, <laughs> I've ranked what? All, one, one to three fifty-eight. The JGI. Well, listen before before we do that, Ryan. I have a question for you. What's so, more important? What's more important than peace of mind? Nothing. Nothing's more important than peace of mind. That's what NordVPN is here for, to give you peace of mind while you are online. And with all the threats that you face today on the internet, which includes Jeff Goodman's horrible takes about uh, <laughs> metrics and about ranks in college <laughs> basketball, it is more important than ever to be sure that you have the best VPN it's that you can get. Well. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service offering the fastest connectivity, most servers, and next-gen encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. And Ryan, you're 22 years old. I know what you do online needs to stay secure. Oh, Plus, come on. You can use <laughs> NordVPN <laughs> on all of your computers and your devices yes. out of the operating system with NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth. Aren't you so glad that you decided to His come parents to the show? are watching. Yeah, come thanks on. for that.
<laughs> you never have to worry about a slow connection either. And planes start at just under $4 per month. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe or use the code B-L-E-A-V. That's believe to get 70% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. All right. Uh, Gonzaga is down by eight with 20 seconds left. I think it's safe to assume that they're going to lose this game. T.O., I'm going to you first on this one. What does it mean about Gonzaga? What does it say about them big picture? How concerned are you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? I'm not. They got bored. We're coming into March. They're about to play the tournament. Gonzaga's bored. Timmy didn't play great. It's part, it's part of it. It's a long season. Like, to say that they're going to run this – and I was one of many that said they were going to run the table. I mean, it's just – it's hard to do. And you're, and you're everybody's Super Bowl, especially in that league. Got a little bored, didn't have their best game, and uh, guys they played tonight. I mean, they're not terrible guys. St. Barry's is pretty good, pretty good. So I've been there. Listen, I've been in Moraga to that gym multiple times. It is like a high school gym, and uh, and that's a Super Bowl. Now, what I will say is, I saw this St. Mary's team earlier this year in person against Colorado State. The job that Randy Bennett has done to put them in position to get like. They're going to get like a five seed now. They might have, yeah, they'll probably get a five seed. In Stain, I mean, he does not have the talent uh, to be talking about it as a five seed. So Randy Bennett, to me, one of the – I think I said this earlier in the year on the show. I think he's one of the top ten X's and O's guys in the country. I think he's that good, and he maximizes talent as much as almost anybody, and he's just not talked about enough because he's tucked up there. And if you went to this gym – and saw their resources, you'd be like, holy shit, how has this guy done this? He went overseas, right? I mean, he went to Australia, got a bunch of kids. Hey, Tommy yeah, Cousy, yeah. really, really good. Yes. Like, he yes. played really well in the Maui Invitational that ended up being the Las Vegas Invitational that ended up having 30 people yep. in the finals. Like, <laughs> Cousy, he's a good player, man. Big, strong body kid. He can control the tempo for them because he's not going to turn it over that much. Had five tonight, but – that kid's a really good player, and he's just a, another veteran guy. Old, they they've went they've gone overseas so long. Uh, old big body guys that can just control things. I think they're pretty good. Yeah. So here's here's my concern with them, and tell me what you think about this, Ryan. Um, where Gonzaga was uh, at the top of Ken Palm's two point uh, two point uh, percentage defense. Uh, at the top of their defensive effective field goal percentage and one of the best shooting teams in college basketball, one of the best two-point shooting teams in college basketball. Drew Timmy tonight, two for 10. Chet Holmgren tonight, three for seven from the floor, right? Those two combined five for 17. Uh, between the, the, the two of them, they only took one three. Uh, over on the other hand, St. Mary's was able to get, last I saw it was 43 points in the paint. It's probably higher uh, by now, which means they were able to get wherever they wanted, score however they wanted, score out of the post, score in the lane, which is not something that you typically do against Gonzaga. If St. Mary's can do this against them, what, what does that mean for teams that have big bodies like, oh, a Kofi Coburn or an Oscar Shibway or Zach Eady or Trevion Williams or any of these other teams with the big hosses at the five? Yeah, I mean, those fives you just mentioned. Obviously, Chet's, if he's not number one pick, he's number two pick right now. But his frame is definitely something that, you know, you got to talk about when you're talking about Kofi Coburn and those type of guys. I mean, I, I like to think this would be an outlier, you know, 12 total points between the, that front court. But, you know, there there's a there is a concern there where if they do get matched up against Kofi or one of the, 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 the Purdue front line, it, it could be, you know, real physical. And I don't know how those dudes are going to, handle the muscle you know down there that some of those big 10 acc guys got here's the thing here's a stat too that stuck out to me after looking at it four assists to 16 or no four assists to 14 turnovers and what does that tell you that they did like that tells me saint mary said we're gonna guard you one-on-one -on -one. we're not gonna over rotate and we hope drew timmy doesn't go nuts like that that throws me for a loop a little bit you can't go two for ten if you're drew timmy then you can't set your defense either because you're just constantly in retreat mode Man, Randy Bennett's even smiling. Like, th this never happens. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He is human. He's awesome. Randy, Randy Bennett, just, again, just a ball coach. Just that, that's what he is. And like you said, Tio, he's done a great job recruiting there, going overseas, even mm -hmm. though he's lost a lot of his assistants that had um, connections overseas, he still managed to, uh, to keep getting kids. And I, I thought – 
Marcellonis's kid was going to be a huge factor at this point in the year. And he really hasn't been, which is the biggest surprise. Uh, but again, this is St. Mary's Super Bowl. This is kind of what they wait for all year to get the Zags in. And the Zags, how much were they playing for? I mean, yeah, they're no, literally, obviously they're literally nothing. They're, they're literally I mean, nothing. It, they're well, it's their rival. Undefeated season. Yeah. Right. It, it's their rival. So you want to, you want to run the league, but you know, sometimes again, if you're Mark view might not be the worst thing at this point to kind of get your guys attention and Absolutely. Hey, you know what, let's get, let's get refocused here. It's been a little bit easy for us beating the Pepperdines and Pacifics and Portland's and, you know, even the BYU's this year. So let, let's kind of, let's step it up here when it matters. How much do you think that that actually plays in, guys? I mean, Ryan and Terrence, you guys play. How how much does this stuff like that play in? Do, do, we, I love that narrative, right? Oh, they needed a loss. Oh, we wanted to lose. We we needed to get our ass kicked. We needed a wake up call. Is that is that actually a thing? Uh, I'll go first. I mean, I obviously in college didn't win quite like Gonzaga did, but I, I think I can understand like a, a complacency. Maybe that would be the word. You know, you're just so. They wake up and they walk in in that league and they're expected to win by 15 to 20 points every game, you know. So I think wake up calls are good, especially when you're playing a team like St. Mary's, who, you know, that's a tournament team. That's a legitimate team. So I think complacency, they, they could get complacent, but a good wake up call is never a bad thing. We talked, we talked a few months ago about how Kentucky made that big run all the way to the national, or is it the final four? And they hadn't lost a game. And that means a lot of your, mistakes are covered up because you won anyway right so some of these losses they bring your mistakes to the forefront they need to move the ball better four assists at gonzaga four assists at gonzaga is not it it's never been it that's never been the way they play they're gonna have to fix some things they're gonna have to continue getting some movement but like ryan said like smc that's that's a tournament that's a good team with a really good point guard we talk point guard play yeah. point guard button yeah. We talk point guard play. Tommy Cooper is a good point. Yeah, really good yeah. point guard. That's what I'm saying is like that type of player is so much more valuable this year than in past years because there just aren't a lot of them right now. There aren't a lot of those guys that you just – you trust to make good decisions. And that's where like Tommy cousy has gone from – again, I talked to him for a while this year. And actually I was the one who two years ago – Right before the pandemic hit, that was the last trip I made was to St. Mary's for their senior night. And I remember telling Randy Bennett as I walked out of there, I'm like, give the kid a scholarship, will you? Like the kids turned himself into one of the better players in, in, in the league. And uh, and he really has. I mean, it, it, I always love those those stories, not not just the walk ons who get scholarships. But how about the walk ons who turn into like really, really good players? And like, how does that happen? How do people miss? That badly on a Tommy Cousy. Well, I mean, he doesn't. I mean, can he jump over a phone book? I mean, guys get guys get like infatuated with that stuff. And, Neither and, could Daly, but he was he was, I mean, he was a good player. Well, I would. Yeah, I didn't get an offer till my last day of high school though, so That's I true. feel where he's coming from. <laughs> good, good man. You said you said why why do people overlook Tommy Cousy? Right? Like, what did people miss? Look at him. I know. What does that, that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> look, Hold on. Look at him. Look at him. Does that dude look like he could ball? Right now, does that dude look like he could ball? No, he looks like he, he just he looked like he just dominate LA Fitness. <laughs> That's right. And then not <laughs> yeah, tell right. anybody. That's what like, I'm talking like, about. like he just walk <laughs> in with his with shorts that are a little too big and high socks and like we get just get busy. <laughs> like that's what he looks like. Uh there's not many, I was on the summer circuit last year too, and and Jeff, you were out there. Rob, yep. you were out there. Like, how many true point guards are there being recruited at a high level? They all have to be able to shoot. They all have to be able to right. score. score. That's kind of the whole thing. Yep. So that's kind of what you're seeing. I think the um, there's a kid from California that's really, really good. Kylan, I think it's Kylan Boswell. He's a point. Yeah. Like, but yeah. how many how many pure points do you really see on the recruiting trail? Can I it's, tell you a funny story about Kylan Boswell really quick? Yeah. Uh, when when you know when, who he is. Yeah, because when when your daughter went to when we did that whole little commitment thing we said that there's a five-star committing oh, every yeah. illinois fan on the they got pissed that it was kyle and boswell <laughs> committing to illinois and so like it went nuts and then like 45 minutes before uh before he committed i don't know how it got out but all of those these twitter accounts started going at the field of 68 being like you guys are assholes i can't believe you told us that it was gonna be <laughs> kyle and boswell it's just jeff goodman's daughter and i was like oh man like, hey boswell I, I can think, go that did, I mean, he's a pure point. 
big body, pure point, steady. But like, I think guys are recruiting, you know, more score first guards. And then but, a but lot of most people are really are pro- score first guards. It's not, That's I don't right. even think it's they're recruiting them. I just don't think there are that many kids these days that want to be pure points that want to make people better. And that's why the Andrew Nemhards stick out as much as they do. Yeah. And, look, and everybody's trying to play two point guards. So you got to have guys do multiple things too, yeah, which yeah. is a big part of that. Yeah. And, but I don't see, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't call Tommy Cusey. Like, I, I don't think he's necessarily a pure point guard. I just think oh. he's a great, he's a great, great ball scheme, ball screen point guard. Like he's not just a guy that's just that's today's pure table. point guard though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's he, what? but he's. I guess what I'm saying is like that dude is a killer too. He's not just a guy that is out there setting the table for people, right? Like I do think he's kind of the guy that that you're referencing. It's just that his strength, instead of being able to blow by people, is being able to get in that ball screen, read where the defense is, and hit these pinpoint passes with one hand. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and also. Um, if you go back and you look over the years at what Randy Bennett's offenses are, like his teams always are uh, way, way up in like assist rate. And and they always are way, way up in terms of possessions that end in ball screens. And he always has point guards that are just elite passers, whether it's uh, was it Mickey McConnell? Yep. What was that guy's yep. name? And Matthew Mickey McConnell. Dova, yeah. Um, and like they just, Patty uh, Mills, Jordan, Patty Mill, Jordan Ford, like he Jordan goes Ford. out and and get these point guards and then and the fit and, and coaches them right. up that fit. Hey, Patty Mills did not pass to anybody. No, he was, he, but like, he was he the early one to zero right. people. Right. No, he was the first I played, one. I played with him at Euro camp and yeah. he's made a lot of money. So I feel like I can say this now yeah. that dude didn't pass the entire camp. I don't think he pa- wanted to pass it in bounds. Like he got irritated. <laughs> like somebody tried to get him to throw inbound the ball. Pad. He was like, no, 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 you got it, fam. You go ahead. <laughs> like, hey, he, hey. Yeah. He didn't pass a whole week. It was unbelievable. Hey. T.O., I coached my son on, on the six-year-old team today. We had to have a talk in the car because all he did every time he got the ball was he just dribbled up and shot it. And I was Good like, him. You got, I was like, you you got to pass it sometimes. Your teammates are going to be mad at you. He's like, I don't understand why they were being mean to me. I was just shooting it. And I was like, that's too, buddy. <laughs> uh, hey, they're going to the they're gonna be mean the rest of his life. Tell him not to even worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, horse, last- horse blinders, Doster. Horse blinders. Last question I got for you guys on Gonzaga before we move on to uh, to to our special guest from uh, from Hog Nation. I want to ask you guys this: Is there anything that can happen, Ryan? I'm going to go to you first. Is there anything that can happen this year that can knock Gonzaga off of the number one seed line, or are they just locked in? They just so far ahead of everybody else. Yeah, I think that they they're probably locked in at the number one seed. But I also that's also me saying I don't think they lose. And this again till the the tournament maybe. But I mean. The WCC is probably the best it's been in, I mean, at least maybe since I've been alive. I think mean, they got three or four teams, you know, projected. So I don't see them losing. But if they did, you know, maybe two twice, maybe they get knocked off. But I don't, I don't see that happening. Have you seen, like, this is the funniest tournament bracket in all of college basketball belongs to the WCC. Really? Yeah. Like, what? have you guys seen this bracket? So, the, like, the, the top, like, the last place team has to win, like, seven days in a row because Gonzaga yeah. has to play the semis in the finals. That's it. Right. They yeah, get the, the double They get the double buy. No, right? it's a triple buy. It's, it's a, a triple, triple buy. buy. It's, a it's the most day, insane bracket I've ever seen. It's a five-day long tournament. So, the bottom four seeds play. Two teams advance, and then I think it's, like, seven and eight play the winners. <laughs> then those two teams advance. And five and the six play those winners. And then those two teams advance, and they play the, the three and the four and the one and the ten. It's just, it's, it's Do you know why? I, I never you know why. Because Mark you know why to that keep Gonzaga to keep Gonzaga. Because Mark Few actually came up with that bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Uh, listen, we got we got a whatever he viewers. wants in the WCC. To he gets. Trust yeah, we got me. a bunch of we got a bunch of new viewers right now. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button. If we get to 200 likes on this video, I will shotgun this truly. Ryan Daly is going to shotgun a beer with me. I'm making him do it. I don't care whether or not he says yes or no. If we get to he's 300 new to the likes, company. he's new to the if, company. If, if, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if we get to 300 likes, if we get the 300 likes, Jeff Goodman will chug a beer. Uh, Dagan, are we ready with our special guest? Oh, we've been ready for our special guest. Okay, let's go. Let's go to our let's special guest. All right, here we go. We have the one and only Mama Hog finally joining us here. 
live after a huge, huge win earlier today against Kentucky. And listen, Mama Hog, I I'm ready. I'm ready to admit I was wrong about your hogs, okay? It took me a while to see the light, but I have finally seen the light, and I'm prepared to say, you know what? I'm sorry I was wrong. Hey, and I accept that apology, and I thank you very much, but I don't need apologies, okay? Hey, I mean, I, I probably said things that I probably should apologize for. To also, I'm not apologizing. It's just between me and you, man. So what, what's it been like? I mean, today, how, how many Coors Lights have you had so far today? I probably had, I don't know, four or five. One I mean, of them was like one of those big tall ones. I don't know who, how it got in my refrigerator, but one of those big giant ones, you know? So I by, mean, by, by me apologizing, does that mean you're not going to come here to Boston and whoop my ass? Well, it just depends on from here on. I mean, I'm, I'm going to cut you some slack right now, but, you know, I mean, it depends. If you turn around and, and cut my hogs, well, might have to make a flight up there. It, as long as they're winning games, I'm all right. But like, if, oh, if it, oh, okay. So you're fair weather. I'm a fair weather. Yes. If I, I'm, they're winning I'm, games, you're good. But if they lose one, you're you're going. Eh, listen, nah. they, they've won a lot of games lately, right? They've won yes. 13 of 14 games. It, yes. They almost beat Alabama in the one they lost. They should have had that one. Yep. How they, how far? They won six out of seven with against ranked teams. Now now actually. Uh, seven out of eight ranked so, teams. I want to know if they get to New Orleans and they make the Final Four. Are, are you going to come to New Orleans and are we going to are we going to have beers together? You know what? That might can happen. The beers are on me if we do that. All right. If, if you, and I was just fixing to ask, how many Coors Lights can you put down in one night? Well, I mean, it, it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just not going to just sit there and just slug them down. I mean, if I'm watching ball or or if i'm if i'm having a good time i don't, I don't know i mean i'd probably put I, i'd say maybe 12 12 fed i can't even listen i am not gonna be able to keep up with you at all mama hog but uh i, I appreciate you coming on i know uh, you wanted to do this and, and gloat about your hogs and you have every right to do so after this this win and this run they've been on but I got I've got a quick couple of questions for you. All right. First of all, you you did give uh, Note some All American. You know, you just put on there All American. Yeah. You really believe that he could be All American? You know, you got to win. Right? To me, the biggest thing is if you're winning at the highest level, that that puts you in the equation for an All American. He's been the best player on one of the best teams in America now. Yeah, and but if you're the best player and you're not winning or going to the to NCAA tournament, you, you're not even considered. Nope. But in nope. your opinion, he's pretty dadgum. He's All-American, right? He's been terrific. Absolutely. Yeah. He, I don't know if he's a first-team All-American. I still want to see kind of how they, how they finish out at this point, but he's in the equation for sure. Okay. And Jalen Williams has the best defensive player in the, in the whole – all of college basketball. He's been, yeah. he's been awesome lately. He's been – I mean, going up against Big Oscar today, nobody holds Oscar in check, but he did the best he could, and he's probably giving away about 30, 40 pounds. Yeah. Uh, he's a beast. He is a beast. Uh, you know, Eric Musselman wants to get you to a game. You know that, right? Well, all he's got to do is like right here, and hey, come on up. I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him your number, and, and we got we got to get you to, uh, you know, to a game, get you to the NCAA tournament game, get you maybe the SEC tournament. And uh, I, I think you got the fan base going here. I mean, I think <laughs> I think you got them going partially because you were coming at me. But uh, I think I think they really like you here. Well, I, I think it was a lot. A lot of it uh, was was them, you know, back in me. But yeah, hey, those hog fans are. I mean, when Clint started there in 1996, you're you're a Razorback from day one, and and those fans are great, no matter what. They stadium are. you're in yeah, i mean there i mean the whole state of arkansas was so good to me when when clint was there it was yeah no it they're was, they're rabid i mean they are crazy yeah. crazy fans yeah. at the highest level and uh you you might be uh the craziest of them all mama <laughs>
I might so, be. I just might be. Listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate that we are now friends. Can we call each we other friends? I'm trying. I'm trying to be nice. All right, we're friends for now. For the time being, friends we're good. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Thanks for joining us in the field of '68 after dark, and uh, we will do it again. We will definitely do it again. <laughs> yes. Now that I can, I know how to do it on my phone. <laughs> Mama Hawk finally made her debut. This one's to you, Mama Hawk. Congratulations on the win. All right. right. Uh, up we we haven't. Before. It's been. No, don't open it yet. Because we. Oh, all, right. all right. It's not quite we, open. Don't worry. You were going to have to shotgun if we get to 300. I'm not shotgun. 300 likes. I'm not shotgun. <laughs> um, all right. So we to tell you how crazy today is big. Providence won their first Big East regular t- season title ever in their first conference regular season title since 1973, 49 years it's been since Providence juggernaut basketball program that they are has won a regular season title uh, in, in the league that they were a part of. It's the first time they've ever won a Big East title in the history of the conference. They've been in that league for 43 years. What are you saying, Doster? I feel like you're, you're getting at something here as a UConn I'm, gal. Like, I feel like you're getting at something just, here. Are I'm these wishing, digs? Like, what are these I'm, right now? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wishing that vaunted Providence basketball program luck. Uh, because they are, they, 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 they you no, no seriousness. I troll, I troll the fan base, but like those, those fans care about, care about the Friars as much as any fan base cares about their, their team. Yeah. Um, they've never, they've never experienced this before. So like, go celebrate, man. Like let it all out. Let it, if it's got to come at me, send it to me. Right. But th- this, this is, it's the first time they've ever won a regular season title. And it's all, awesome. hey, let me and promise you something. I'm legitimately right now, happy they're for celebrating. I'm legitimately happy for, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, they're I'm, celebrating. I'm happy for, I'm happy for oh, them. I'm happy for Ed Cooley. Blasted right now. <laughs> they yeah. should. They yeah. should. I mean, again, Cooley, it, it's amazing. Like, I've known Eddie since he was an assistant at, at Boston College. And I tell this story all the time. One of the first times I met him early on, I was at ABCD camp. And he comes up to me and he goes, hey, can you tell that kid over there that we're offering him a scholarship? It was Ramel Bradley. He ended up going to Kentucky. He was out of New York. And, uh, and I looked at him. I'm like, dude, you can't, like, you can't offer him. Like, your head coach, Al Skinner's not even here. He's like, just do it. Just Al doesn't care. Like, he doesn't, whatever. And uh, that was kind of how Cooley operated. Cooley and Bill Combe might have been the best staff the best duo assistant coaches I've ever seen doing this. And then Cooley gets a job at Fairfield. Then he goes to Providence. And as we said, like Providence, how much success have they had? Not much. They haven't won tournament games and still they haven't. And and that's going to be the big thing. This season's going to be remembered, obviously for this, for winning their first regular season title ever, but it's still going to be defined can they win a tournament game? Because I, they I, have I won. entirely disagree. I, I entirely disagree. Gotta win one. Gotta win think, one, man. I Gotta win one. I I don't think Providence has to do anything else for the season to be to be uh to be defined. Gotta they, win a they, tournament game. They gotta, gotta win never, one. Gotta Just win one. one. they yeah, well, if they so what you're telling me is that Providence, who's not very good, who has won yep. every single one of their games by like one possession. Who's yep. had all of these heartbreakers and all of these thrilling wins and all of these memorable moments for that fan yep. base? Yep. If they do not go out and win one game in one knockout tournament, this this season's a waste. Yeah. And it doesn't. No, happen. I'm not saying that. No, no, I never said that. What I said is that it'll be known for winning the the Big East regular season title, but also defined with the with the side note of but they didn't win a tournament game again. That's yeah. that's how it'll be. It'll be that full sentence. I I me. disagree. I, I do not think it'll – I don't think – if if they make it to a Final Four, then this will be, like, the greatest season ever that we've ever seen for them, right? But they've been to a Final Four before, right? They've seen that happen. So, I really do think – like, it doesn't matter what they do. This season's going to go down to the memory of, of Providence fans forever. Like it, Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think they're defined – like, especially that fan base, like you, like you said, like, man, they're de- worst case scenario right now, they're finishing the season 24-4. and four. Worst yeah. case scenario. I mean, this is they, – they've already cemented – Probably they've the won best a championship prob- they've never yeah. won before. Like yeah, this the is- best Providence team in history, arguably. 
And the crazy part is, is like, they just fit perfectly. Like when it comes to like, is there top end talent? Probably not, but like they just fit so well. And that team just plays hard and they're so gritty they're and tough. all those one possession games. I think what obviously winning a game in a tournament helps. It helps everybody. Like, but I, I think they've already done their damage in the minds of everybody that's I want Wait, wait, Daly, I want your best Jared Bynum story. <laughs> My best Jared Bynum story. You got story. something good? Do you got anything good for us? Uh, they, on the, only on the record, I'll tell you this: I, when he was when he was a freshman, uh, he was the only freshman on the team. That was my redshirt year, so he had to, he was the one who had to bring the laundry bin to the, the, the to the uh, to the people who would change our laundry. He was the one who had to push the cart like 300 feet through Hagen Arena, and everyone was looking right. at him. He was our little son. Yeah, now it's crazy. I blew up. I'm so happy for him. He worked his Could he butt shoot? off this summer. Ryan, like last year, he was like five for 45 from, from yeah, like. This year he's unconscious shooting the ball. The How was he as a shooter when, again, when you were there with him? Yeah, when I was there with him, I would say he was right around, you know, I thought he was like 35, 36 from three. I always thought, I mean, last year I just thought it was a fluke. I knew he wasn't that poor of a shooter. Yep. You know, I, I talked to him like every other day, basically. And, you know, I know he was going through it mentally. But, I mean, I think this year I, I was always asking him, like, why – where's your offense, you know, how your team, and it's been him <laughs> since yeah. he came back from injury. I think he's averaging like 20 a game in the big East shooting 50 from three. Been absolutely we should have had him on tonight. We should have had him on yeah. with, with, with Ryan tonight. We'll do it next <laughs> no. time you're on. Hey, you yeah, know what? We, we need more. to, we, we need to let Jared Bynum have his night tonight. We, uh, we don't need to yeah. talk Good to point. anybody for a, but from a bar, yeah, I'm hear publicly. From to, yeah. Face how great would it be bar, Bynum, him, you know, doing, <laughs> Doing shots from some bar in Providence, you know. What we need to in. do, you know, what we need to do. We should text Fan of the Zoom League and see if he could just jump on from wherever, because you know, Fan is getting hammered right now. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you wonder where Fan is right now. Where is John Fan? <laughs> hey man, Fanta works. You think? Yeah. You think he's at a bar? I say he's driving back home. I think so there, too. There I is a one. Working. There is a 100% chance that John Fanta right now is at a bar somewhere in Providence celebrating with those Providence fans where he is a hero. Did you text 100% him? 100% chance. No, I don't Dagan, need to text Dagan, him. Dagan, Dagan, hit him with a link. Hit him Let's with see a link. where Fanta he, is. Let's find if Fanta That's going to be the big thing. Around. Where is John Fanta right now? Dagan, you better get him the link. <laughs> okay? And, and he's got like, no choice. He'll get the he's link. I'll send, I'll send it to him right now. Wherever he is, yeah. just tell him he, he has no choice. Wherever he is right now, he's got to come in. Thirty uh, right. seconds. But was there was there anything that we did not get to tonight at all that, that, that um, we need to talk about? Chat. Is there anything that you want us to to discuss? Remember, we are now at one hundred and you know what we did. Six. We're at one hundred sixty-six no, likes. Thirty-four more likes, and I'll shotgun a truly. I'll give you one. I'll give you one, and and it's a mid-major, and I feel like, but it's very important. Was Loyola Chicago losing at you and I? That's a that big be, one because that was, that was going to be my cheers of the night. Yeah, it, it might have cost. I don't think it's going to cost Loyola a, a, an NCAA tournament berth. But I, listen, if they lose early in the Valley tournament, maybe they're not. They're safe. the four seed. Now, now, Loyola is not safe in the like for for an at large. They are not. Their best win is San Francisco. They're not. It's crazy. They're they're they are not safe. They look very good in the metrics, but they I hope they not, get in. I don't want to see these mids not get in. I, I like it's been such they, a, they're bad, a tournament team. They deserve to be in there. Right. I hope so. I hope they get in. I hope San, San Fran will get in. If San Fran's in as like a nine, I think you got to put Lola in Are the they? field. It's San Francisco. Wow. Yeah, I think they're bringing. They really I do. I think they're going to. I think San Fran's in safely right now. I do. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. Here's your moment. Right. Here's your moment. Yeah. Let's see where he's at. See where he is. I, bear, I guarantee he's in a car. There he oh, is. He's driving. <laughs> there he, he is. Lost, told lost you. The bet. <laughs> I win. Winner, baby. Fanta, Fanta, you're live right now, just so you know. Uh, why, why, why aren't you at a bar in Providence? What are you doing? I'm heading out right now, gentlemen. I'm heading out right now for the party. Oh, yeah. Really? Really? I told you, yes. <laughs> I thought you were going. I thought you Let's would be go. working, Fanta. No names, please. <laughs> no names, Where are you please. going? Fanta, where are you going? That's not you, for any, any, uh, maybe, uh, there's an old bar. Rick, Rick Patino used to go. Um, oh, oh, geez. Name, name dropping. Bar. Name That'll dropping. Yeah, well, well, way back in the 80s, it said bar named Marcelino's. They stay open until 
about 3 a.m. So I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm getting ready. I'm gearing up for what's going to be a big, big night in Friartown. How was it go. tonight? It, what, what was the atmosphere like tonight compared to the last couple, you know, the last few games we've been at? It felt like when the fans walked into the building two hours before the game started, that there was never any chance for Creighton and that it didn't matter who was on the other side of this matchup, that tonight was going to be a party. They're playing We Are Family by Sister Sledge and Celebration by Cool in the Gang before the game even tips off. <laughs> you know? It, and and no, no disrespect to Creighton, who's without their starting point guard for the first right. game, and Ryan they had no shot. You, you could tell. They didn't have a shot tonight, and that's not disrespect to them. There was no way that Providence was losing this game. Electrifying atmosphere yet again. A sea of green. What a job done by that yeah. student section. And guys, college basketball is all about cool stories, right? A.J. Reeves comes in as a freshman. He is rolling. He looks like Big East freshman of the year. Yeah. He gets a stress fracture in his foot. He wasn't the same that the rest of that season. He wasn't the same as a sophomore. He puts on 40 pounds. Not in shape. Ed Cooley calls him in in the summer and says, hey, you got to get right for us to have any chance. You have got to get your body right. Kid gets in the weight room, loses 40 pounds. This season, up, down, still kind of inconsistent. A.J. Reeves saved his finest hour for his senior night for a Big East regular season title, the first in program history. It's a feel-good story. The tears tonight were real. Yeah. You got Ed Cooley who grew up in Project Housing. He didn't know if he'd have water from day to day. He didn't have heat from day to day. He is in tears on the floor. And it was honestly an honor and a privilege to be the voice of that moment for Providence College on Fox Sports. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy for Ed. And, and look, I know that he, uh, Goodman, you, we'll talk about this more on, on Monday yeah. nights after Dark Show when, it, when we kind of get into like the coaching carousel and hot seat mm -hmm. stuff. But Ed Cooley's name is going to come up in a lot of different jobs. I really hope that he stays at Providence forever. Like he's got, like he is Providence through and through. Like he should be at that job for 50 years. They should build a statue outside of the arena for him. I hope he never leaves. With Agreed. You. And I don't think yeah. he will. I don't think he'll leave. I, I don't, I don't know if there's a job out there. I think, you know, again, if you're a cool, you're probably going to listen to a couple out of respect. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I don't think he can leave Providence unless it's for a blue blood, which I don't think he can get anyway. Yeah, just get, get yourself a little bit of a bigger paycheck. Go back. Right. Uh, Fanta, we got to let you go. You, you got to you, – you, it looks like you have go a – Go drink, Fanta. Go drink. Looks like, it looks like you have a shot and a beer in your future coming up right now. So go enjoy it, man. Good job love tonight. You guys, love you guys. Love After Dark. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. And, guys, guys, I saw I, – I wasn't able to watch a lot of the action. Oof. But nights like this is what After Dark's made for. And yeah. to America. <laughs> what happened? Uh, he gave us the Irish goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I, I don't know what man, just uh, happened. <laughs> man, oh, man. All right, let's, oh. let's get our three cheers in order here. Yep. Yep. Let's go I'm tired. Cheers. Uh, all right, I'm going to go. Goodman, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Just so, uh, Ryan, you, you'll get a feel for it as we kind of go through this. So, Goodman, you all right. Cool. So My cheer that. to one Gerald Gillian, of formerly of Team Breakdown, who I've known he and the family forever out of Florida. And he was hired this past year by uh, Elliot Charles, the AD of Chicago State, to take a program that people thought wasn't even going to be a program. They thought it was going to disband the last couple of years. I mean, think of these win totals over the last uh, eight wins in 2014-15, four wins, six, three, three, four. Last year, they were 0-9. They just beat New Mexico State, the best team in the WAC today. So uh, cheers to Gerald Gillian, Chicago State. That's a yes. hell of a win. Go ahead, T.O. I'm going to go the easy one. First Big East championship in history for their school, Providence Friars, to you. Good one. I like it. like it. Eddie Cooley. I'm going to go is, what with What a great Bryant. story that is. So good. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Go ahead. 
I'm going to go with Bryant. Uh, Phil Martelli Jr. is a good friend. He's on the staff there. They uh, they hawked Wagner down and they ended up taking the regular season first ever, I think, I saw on their Twitter page for Bryant. So I'm going to cheers to That's the Martelli family and Bryant. Peter Kiss, nation's leading yep. scorer. That if boy. I told you guys my uh, my uh, my uh, um, Jared Grossel story, you have not. When I was when I was fourteen, right? When I uh, my my when I was eighth in eighth grade, the summer before my freshman year in high school, Jared Grosso was uh, an incoming freshman at Quinnipiac University. Quinnipiac University is a half a mile from my house. Uh, they had a basketball camp for incoming freshmen at Quinnipiac University. Uh, there was something. I think there was like probably 200 kids at the camp. Um, I was on the team that Gary, Jared Grosso coached. I was the leading scorer on the team that Gary, Jared Grosso coached. We won the league championship. But Did Jared he MF you? my coach. Uh, no, but it was the first time that he ever won a championship as a coach. That's great. That's great score. That's a great story. Can you tell it again? Tell, tell it again. <laughs> you want me to? All right. So when I was no, years I don't. Old, <laughs> dang it. Dang it. Tell me my stories aren't better than that. Come on. That was yeah, quick, Rob, Rob, that was that, that wasn't great. I'm gonna be honest. That Thank was, you. That was, my that stories was are better. That was quick. That wasn't great. It was quick. It wasn't a four minute long story that you had to. It was. Quick. I will give. Call I will give that, that credit. It was quick. It was quick. It was quick. It was quick. Uh, we are currently 18 <laughs> likes away from uh, 200 likes. Can we get to 200? Come on, I'm just do it. Come on, people. Yeah, we're not. We're 18. 18 likes away. Can we get 18 more likes? So we can get to 200. Um, 200 likes uh, on the night. Um, I. You know what? I, I'm going to go. Uh, my toast. I, I was going to go with Northern Iowa for winning the. Uh, they started out the season. I think it was three and seven, and they went and won the Valley um, regular season title, which is really impressive considering what we all thought of. Uh, what we all thought of um, Loyola coming into the season and how they kind of were going to handle themselves. But I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to send my toast up to Murray State. Uh, there you go. The Racers finished their season twenty eight and two. Uh, they went 18 and 0 in the Ohio Valley, which is a better league than I think a lot of people realize. Yeah. Um, their last four or five road games, all of them, they got down early. I think they were down by double digits for most of them at one point. Uh, uh, and they came back to win. They they have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of providence in them, where it's like I don't know how they keep winning these games, but they keep finding a way to win these games. But they are absolutely a team. That I I fully believe this. That can win two games in March. Tr, I think you said this the other day too. I think that they can win two games in March. They have a point guard um, and Justice. Uh, the fuck's uh, Justice Juice, uh, Hill. Juice Hill. Juice Hill. Juice Hill. Yeah, Juice Juice Hill. There you go. Juice Hill. They have a point guard in Juice Hill that can take over a game. They had thirty six in the game earlier this year. They have a big guy in KJ Williams that had thirty nine in the game this year. Scored thirty one in the second half at Moorhead State, and they got. Uh, a wing in Tevin Brown that is uh, that can take over games. Their leading scorer, leading assist guy, um, has had gone for 30 in the game this year. They're the only team in the country that has three different guys go for 30 points. They won their league outright. They won. Uh, they swept through their league, and they're getting ready for the OBC tournament, which they do not have to win to be able to get a bid to the NCAA tournament. So cheers to the racers. Are we at 200 yet? We're nope. at 195. <laughs> we aren't, but the way, you just told, well, the way you just told that story, you should just do the shotgun anyway, because I think you want to do it. <laughs> Well, I was trying to. Get you, to you were holding it out, so you I was holding <laughs> it out. Just do it anyway. Nope, we didn't get there. So, uh, listen, this has been fun. This has been the field of sixty-eight after dark. For Jeff Goodman, for Terrence Oglesby, for Ryan Daly making his debut, and for our producer Dagan Hughes, who has not yet appeared on camera, uh, but maybe he will one day. My name is Rob Doster. Thank you for being here.